depending on your space, everyone's going to have their individual needs or configurations. You can see we're dealing with a small space here. So we're going to have each plant site across from each other. And this is how we're going to design uh, our garden. However, depending on what your needs are, you may want to have all your plant sites in a straight row. That's fine. The, the rain barrel garden comes with extra T's, straights, and L's to accommodate your specific needs. Okay, from here it's pretty straightforward. We got our half inch tubing, gonna connect it to our feed line, and we're gonna customize our little garden. I'm gonna get an L. What we don't want are any kinks or any bends. That's why we have the extra parts in that bag. Let's use them. Okay, same tool. Same procedure, we're gonna be cutting some tube, getting this tubing down to our pots where we need to be. The one thing we wanna remember is this half inch tubing is gonna be connected to our pots and go straight over the center. This way we, can't, uh, we won't have any leaking um, of our water. We're gonna cut this tube here, half inch L to get that drain line going down. Here you go this guy in here and we're gonna cut it right about here we're gonna tee off we're gonna send one line down this way one line down this way easy stuff a T it's just what we need put a T in here okay nice and tight these are barbed so they shouldn't leak if you are worried about them leaking click clamps are a nice way to go and do a little guesstimate here. Run this tube over here. This one over here. Little guesstimate over here as well. Cut. Just happen to have two L's. Just what we need. One line that way one line this way. Now one thing we are going to do is we're going to secure these lines so that when the line goes down the tubing is going straight over and our drip emitters are directly underneath uh, the pots so our water can't be leaking outside the pot in any way. Okay so we're going to use zip ties to secure our lines these pots are real easy to puncture with a screwdriver. And let's go ahead and adhere this line. One reason I like to adhere things is you never know. A raccoon, a cat, a dog um, bumps into your lines, is messing around with your plants, and uh, all of a sudden your drip lines are all over the place. So let's put them in the place where they need to be. And zip tying this guy here. Where would we be without zip ties? All right, and from here, let's run our lines straight down. We're gonna go right about here, and then we're gonna go over to this pot. Super easy. In fact, you know what? Let's um, let's extend the line and secure it over here. So let's cut it here. Remember, cut a little long, you're okay. Cut a little short, you got problems, you're gonna to need to recut. So we'll go ahead and cut it. All right, what we've done is we've connected our half inch line to our feed valve. We've got an L here coming down to a T and our line's gonna come out and circle all the way around. Now remember, whenever you set up um, your rain barrel garden, one nice thing to, to do is to have what we call a closed line. And what that is, is something that connects all the way around. The reason is, is it distributes the pressure nice and evenly. Each plant will get the same amount of water. Okay, here we are. We have our line. It's cut a little bit long. That's okay. If we need to shorten it up, we can always cut a little more. We have our half inch L. We're going to bring this feed line over to the other side. Let's push it in like that. 
We're going to attach our line over here, connect it. We're going to come back over, adhere our zip ties, and keep the speed line nice and tight. Okay, we got our half inch L, half inch line. You know what to do. Same thing as the other side. Let's connect them and we'll connect these lines. All right, our feed line's really taking shape here. We're at our, our last connection piece. Let's go ahead and cut this and connect it, and then we'll come back over. And like I said, we'll adhere everything nice and tight with zip ties. And final connection to make our closed loop. And there we have it. Looks a little crazy right now, but when we put it all, hammer everything down with some zip ties, should be ready to put our drip irrigation in. Zip ties, five gallon inserts, easy to put a hole right through the side. Always push away from yourself. Put the zip tie through and let's adhere the drip line. Easy stuff. All right, last zip tie is in. Our feed line's nice and tight. And next step, we're gonna pop holes in the feed line, and we're gonna put our uh, drip emitters in. We're gonna be ready to water and plant. All right, the next step is easy. We got our hole punch in your kit. Take it out of its box. We're gonna create some holes. We're gonna put these little drip irrigation emitters in line so that our plants get water. It's real simple. Hole punch, middle of the pot. Let's go ahead and make a hole. You can make it on the side. What I wouldn't do is make it on the top. Let's make it on the side or on the bottom so that water is getting right to the plant as uh, convenient as possible. You'll push it in, pull it out. This handy little guy pulls the plastic out so we don't have any uh, clogs. From here, you want to use the pointed end, the pointed end, and you'll hear it snap just like that. That's our drip line. And we're going to continue all the other buckets. Let's do it. You're going to have some extra um, drip emitters in your kit. You can see we have some plants off here to the side. Uh, they are soil plants, it's no big deal. If we wanted to cut one of the lines, uh, put a T in there, run an irrigation over there, put one of these um, drip emitters off to those plants, one less thing we have to worry about getting water. Okay, here we are. We got our pump hooked to our drain, our flood line. Um, we have our drip line all set up. We have our drip emitters plugged into the drip line. It's nice and secure to our five gallon inserts. We have two things left to do. We're going to plug our timer into our pump. I'm going to show you how to set the timer. We're also going to set up our aeration so our rain barrel has aeration. Okay, our timer, very important, needs to get plugged in to a power supply right here. These timers are not waterproof. If you need to put them inside a Tupperware bin to keep them dry, do so. If you're underneath um, some decking or roofing, you should be fine. Just make sure they don't get wet. Um, in this particular case, we're kind of underneath some uh, shading, but uh, what we're gonna do is once everything's put together, we're gonna leave it on top of the rain barrel garden, cover it with a uh, Tupperware, and uh, should be fine. The second thing we're gonna do is connect our aeration system up. Right now we have our timer set in. Let's concentrate on how much water our plants are gonna need. All plants are different and all scenarios are different depending on how hot or how cold is gonna determine how much water you need. So at first, let's just start with one gallon per plant per day. These are one gallon per hour drip emitters. Let's go ahead and set this timer for one hour. Each pin represents 15 minutes in order to create an on cycle, you must depress that pin down. 
we want one hour, we depress four pins down. Second thing, on the side, we want this red button to be up. That represents automatic. We are automatically coming on one hour per 24 hour cycle, the way we have it set. Don't forget, we have dual outlets, one on each side. If you should want to expand your rain barrel garden and run two rain barrel gardens, one timer will suffice. All right, one of the last things we're going to be doing is connecting our aeration system. We have an air pump, an air stone, some air tubing. The concept's easy. We're going to be pumping oxygen into the water, creating a nice, healthy, sterile environment. Okay, super easy. Aeration pump, air tubing, connect. Done. Second thing, air stone. Air line, connect, and push it nice and tight together. So we have our air pump going to our air stone. This is going to diffuse the air. Lots of bubbles inside this rain barrel. Nice, healthy environment. And go ahead and just drop it in. Okay, last step. We got the, our net pot which is going to act as uh, a bit of a filter for our gutter system. And we're just going to simply put the uh, net pot in the top here. There's plenty of room. Don't worry about your airline here. Um, and if you really want to keep debris out, you do have an extra strainer bag. Take that strainer bag, just put it on, put it in here. If you want, you can wrap it around the sides like this. That way we're making sure that no insects, no, no anything from the roof. We're, we're filtering the water before it goes into the rain barrel. It does two things. One, it makes sure that you have nice sterile water. Two, it keeps our um, lines from getting clogged. All right, last step. Let's take our cut line and put it inside our net pot and do a rain dance. Okay, so we have a rain barrel put together. Next step is planting. How do we plant in coir? It's very easy, same way we plant in soil. You have a nice little basil plant here, purple basil. I'm gonna just pull some of the coir aside. Put them in here, and you're set to go. Now, if you do have plants that are in soil, simply wash the soil off and plant them as you saw here. All right, your rain barrel garden system does come with a pH test kit. They're really easy to use. Little strips, take them out, test your water once you have your fertilizer in there, compare the color here and it will tell you if you have a low or high pH. If you have a low pH and need some pH adjusting solution, please visit our website. Um, we also have a pH down solution as well. Uh, there is one more thing, it does not come with the kit. Um, a TDS meter does come in handy after a while. Um, TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. This is a way to measure the amount of fertilizer in your system. Simply submerge the tip into the water you'll get a reading here of what the concentration of fertility is in your water. And this will help you to um, monitor your system. The rain barrel garden systems are meant to be expandable. You can see I have four systems here. We're feeding the plants up there. And one thing to remember is depending on what kind of space you have or what kind of configuration you would like, you can do it. Um, it's, it's very easy and very maneuverable. We have a total of 200 gallons here and we're feeding approximately 30 plants. All right, you can see right now we're under intense sunlight. This is perfect for these plants, perfect for this system. They're gonna just completely thrive here. You'll notice one thing I did to this system is I actually brought them up off the ground using fence posts. There's a number of different things you can um, incorporate into this system to utilize your, your individual preferences. And for us, this works real good. The long guy can come in, 
or the dogs can't get to them. It also makes it difficult for pests to get to our plants. So I really enjoyed um, raising the rain barrel garden system up off the ground. We get fantastic results. You can see how happy these plants are. They're going to put off at least 10 pounds of tomatoes per plant. Okay, if you've chosen our uh, recirculating system, you're going to get a two and a half gallon bucket. Inside this bucket, there's a pump with a float valve. This float valve automatically turns the pump on and off as it needs to to recycle the water back into the rain barrel. This bucket has two half inch straight valves sticking out, and we're going to connect these two valves to our system. With our rain barrel garden configured the way it is, we're going to have two of our half inch straight L's at the end. Right here, we have our half inch L connected to our grommet. This is going to allow the water to be recirculated back to our recirculating pump. Our pump will then recirculate the water back into our rain barrel. Okay. Once again, we're just putting this half inch T into this grommet. You'll see that they kind of go in tight. They're meant to, so there's no leaking. And on this side as well. Easy as that. And as that. Now we're going to grab some half inch tubing, cut the proper distance, and connect the recycling pump. Okay, real easy stuff. We got our half inch tubing, we got our half inch uh, L's and T's, we're just going to connect them. Lay it down there, we can see where we need to cut, just go ahead and cut, and connect. up a little bit. We have one side complete. Do the other side also. A little easier than tilling the garden. So set up. Now all we have to do is plug our pump in. Actually we have one more thing to do. We need to connect our recycling valve to our recycling pump. We're gonna be ready to garden. Okay when we reconnect when we connect our uh, recycling pump to the recycling valve you have your top, your lid for your three uh, your 2.5 gallon bucket. Go ahead and put the tubing through there and let's also put our click clamp which we used earlier and this is gonna this is gonna secure our half inch line to our half inch pump fitting. And then you okay 
So we have our click clamp, our half inch tubing. We're gonna connect our recirculating pump here. Let's just go ahead and put that on there. Put our tubing on and tighten up our click clamp. If you're wondering what this little valve is here, it's just as the water comes up, it's gonna turn the pump on. So the pump will never be on unnecessarily. Before you connect the tubing to your recirculating valve, go ahead and put your lid on. And go ahead and connect right there. Now here we have our power line from our pump. One thing we wanna make sure, sure of, you'll see this little larger piece right here. We don't wanna submerge this. We want this outside the bucket, okay? And it conveniently fits outside the bucket. So once we have all this assembled, let's go ahead and plug it in. So we have our aeration pump on, we have our recirculating pump on, and we have the pump inside the rain barrel on. So we're ready to go.